Hey everybody, it's Guardsman. we're back with another video. This is just a really quick, short video to kind of give a little bit of filler between waiting on doing things. I uh, just wanted to give an update, kind of showing some of the changes I've tweaked with the extractor. So I know I haven't released this yet, so none of you have really got a chance to even look at it to start with. But I went ahead and did, and my attempt to kind of polish up all the content, is I decided that the extractors needed a proper loot table. And this is something that was planned, so it was going to happen no matter what. But the version I showed off in the last uh, episode, the loot table system, or the, the drop system, how it worked for the extractor, was just a simple list of dusts, and it would go through that list, and it would just pick a random one and drop it in, in, into the output slot. So you get it, it would go, and it would create a, and it would output the material, and it would just be some kind of dust, it didn't matter what the dust was, anything that had the word dust in it that turned into an ingot would be considered, because after all, what I was looking for was metallic dust, things that uh, could have been bonded with the uranium when it was being processed and would be outputted. After all, for, uh, for those who actually want to look into this, if you actually do Google and go look up uranium ore, you'll find that there's like at least uh, six to eight different metals that can very commonly be found mixed in with uranium when it is being mined. These happen to be things like copper, uh, tin, iron, stuff like that. Things that you usually find bonded with tons of other ores. Like usually when you mine iron ore, you also find other things mixed in with it like copper and, and tin and other stuff that has to be processed out. Uranium is no different. I figured we would do an output slot for that to kind of give it a little bit better reasoning for the waste processing system and give you that output. But with that, we do have a loot table which is resulting in a lot of different things. Now the loot table is very simple. And I actually haven't built a lot of code for this because uh, I do plan to actually copy this loot table system and use it in other mods in the future, including in this, this mod as well. Uh, this will actually be used for the output for the uh, uranium pellets as well, so we'll use the same loot table for that. It is configurable, so there is a config file that does generate it does generate per name. I haven't done it per item because the plan is to eventually actually merge all of the items that have the same name into one loot entry and then create a boolean that you can turn off dropping all of those items or dropping only one. So say you had like five different iron dust and you only want to drop one iron dust, that the settings will eventually be there for it. But this system does work, ignoring this stuff here, I'll talk about this in a second, but how the system does work is when it actually does lo hit load complete. Load complete is called when all the mods are finished loading and when the world is loaded. So when you actually finish loading on the mods, this will be called once, and then when you load the world, this will be called again. This is actually kind of very important. A lot of mods actually do do stuff in load complete. Mechanism furnace recipes are done this way. It's not the best ideal to do, but kind of have to do it because a lot of people still use uh, post in it for their recipes. And a lot of mods still, for some reason, do not register a lot of their material into that post init stage when you're technically supposed to use pre init and, and init to do all that work. And in newer mod versions of Minecraft, uh, particularly 112, uh, Forge actually does force you to do all the stuff in, near the pre init phase. Uh, but we're doing 1.7 still, have an update to 1.12, we'll eventually get there. But how this works, so when it hits load complete, we just do some really quick, one, we clear the list because we're resetting it. So this will reload so you can actually have, in theory, world specific settings if you actually wanted to, depending on what mods you would install. So if you had some mods that would do certain things based on one world versus another, this will actually take care of that by clearing this out. Uh, we then initialize some basic dust in here. So right now I've got redstone and glowstone in here just because those are two dust that eh, would be kind of useful to get out and return. They're set at a very low uh, uh, weight. How the weight system does work, the higher the number you stick in here, the lower the chance of it dropping. And I'll kind of explain how, this, how that works in a second. But we set these with really low drop rate, about 20. And we add, of course, stone dust in here, which is supposed to have the highest drop rate, which is one. Uh, it does not look like I have a mod with stone dust in here at the moment. I'll go and test this later to make sure it is working. We then search through the entire ore dictionary looking for any dust. We have some really nice methods in the super class that actually does take care of most of this for us, uh, including using some nice lambda functions that kind of just simplify life. This makes the code really reusable. So it means if I want to come in here later and say, grab every nugget for some other process, say we were making a smelting machine or something, then I can put a function here that says, okay, I want uh, only ore items that have the name dust. And say we like say this was iron dust that then result in a nugget and I can grab all those and it just it makes life really really cool for functionality wise. Well this does uh, add entry, does a few other things like we have the ingot check down here which is what I actually use because if you see this, this actually does do that lambda function if item it has an ingot and we'll put it on list. We then of course load the configuration. Configuration actually does save things. Really simple uh, save system. It just creates a category called loot weights puts the dust in there, puts the default weight, and this is kind of where this up here comes into. I have picked out some of the dust and I have added some default weights. These are kind of just guesstimations. These are kind of just how I want the system to work, not ex perfectly optimized 
uh, to how it should in theory work, but what I did want is to make sure that your common ores are almost always dropped, then your less common ones like lead and nickel are dropped, and then gold and platinum are very high up on that list. Uh, that way you don't get those as often, but you still get them. And then I have disabled certain ones, like these are disabled because these are alloys, and these are disabled because these are mod specific dusts that I don't think should be dropped. And I will let uh, mod pack developers decide if they want to have those dropped and at what rates they want to have them dropped out of the machine. Uh, but that's the system, very basic, but does result in a better drop rate. And eventually I will be tweaking this uh, uh, a little bit more. The plan is to make sure that you almost always get toxic dust uh, out of the material. So you, uh, that will be added, that will be tweaked as well. And I think we're going to be adding a progress bar system at some point. How the progress bar system will work is that instead of getting back a single unit of dust back, you'll get like some percentage, you'll get like 5%, 6%. And this will eventually stack up if you get a full item. This will kind of make the machine function a lot better. Because then instead of getting back, say, one iron dust, you may get back 10% iron dust, 5% copper dust, and everything else. So you're slowly getting a lot of stuff together. And it would be kind of a cool experiment to play, play with. And of course, I will be adding settings to switch between both systems where you get full dust all the time on the progress bar system. Uh, but the reason for adding that is to, of course, make sure you always get the toxic dust here, which we have in this barrel over here. Uh, but this is actually working really well, and that's about all I got for you guys. I'll be back with more videos kind of talking about different mechanics. I'm hoping as soon as I get the polish done to go into detail about the mechanics about every single machine, how they work, how they interact, and probably best ways to set up these machines. That way you guys aren't guessing on how to get these set up. Because I am tweaking with these, and this is the reason why you're seeing more machines in here, is that we now have three output machines, and of course we ended up with three of those and a few other. We now have double the amount of boilers over here. So I'm trying to figure out what is a good optimal setup which i'm doing a horrible job at but i will eventually do we'll figure out probably use some mathematical algorithms to actually get it but i'll see you guys later